Yeah. <laughs> Congresswoman Kamek. Yeah. What, no quips? No yeah, nothing? Yeah, it's a true Florida woman. <sighs> <laughs> That's right. Go Gators, baby. <laughs> well, good morning. I'm so glad to see this room filled uh, because what we have to say today is so important. I, uh, I want to make clear, as so many of my colleagues already have, that this legislation, it establishes a narrow framework to protect the United States and Americans against applications controlled by foreign adversaries. And perhaps most importantly, incentivizes divestment from adversarial nations. As has been stated here multiple times, it is not a ban. Tick tock, it is not a ban. And I don't care how many times you want to put that out on social media, it's not a ban. But again, thank you for proving our point that you're manipulators. The CCP threat is very real, and it's sorry, I'm feeling <laughs> sassy today. Uh, the, the, I, I know, I know, I'm trying to rein it in. The CCP, uh, CCP threat, it's very real, and it is very serious. Tomorrow, the Energy and Commerce Committee will hold a markup on this bill and a companion piece of legislation, the Protecting Americans Data from Foreign Adversaries Act. A group of dedicated lawmakers have worked significantly, in depth, and collaboratively on this bill. And it cuts across both chambers and on both sides of the aisle. Lawmakers, as was pointed out, from all factions of the House and Senate are coming together because this is not political. This is about the United States' sovereignty, protecting Americans, our national security, and our constitutional rights. Now, within hours of the announcement of this legislation, TikTok, who just happens to be the most public forward-facing entity, which, again, this isn't against TikTok specifically, but any app that is owned by a foreign adversary, they came out with a statement calling it a ban, which, as we have pointed out and corrected the record, it is not, and claimed that they would be fighting for Americans' First Amendment rights. Thank you, TikTok, for proving our point. You are manipulators, you don't tell the truth, and you damn sure don't give one iota about Americans' constitutional rights. The irony of the CCP claiming to stand up for Americans' First Amendment rights is definitely the joke of the century. They seem to have forgotten that they not only steal Americans' data, violate their Fourth Amendment rights regularly, but also violate Americans' First Amendment rights daily. The data proves it, and I invite members of the press to review the data that we have here. I know several of my colleagues have talked about these points, about how there's suppression of different content that doesn't align with the CCP, how it's amplified or suppressed. I'll give you some very specific numbers. When the Hong Kong protests were at their peak, there was a 180 to 1 ratio on Instagram versus TikTok. On Instagram, the hashtag Hong Kong protest was generating 132,000 hashtags on TikTok, 762 in the exact same time period. Mm -hmm. Now, there's on any other issue, pick Taylor Swift, whatever, it's a 2 to 1 ratio. You can see how that is completely out of whack. On COVID blame, over a 400 to 1 ratio. If you were to type in China virus, hashtag China virus, on Instagram, there were 79,353 on Instagram. Zero to be found on TikTok. When it came to Tiananmen, uh, shock. When it came to the hashtag Tiananmen or Tiananmen Square, on Instagram, you could find in the exact same time frame 74,334 hashtags stating Tiananmen Square, on TikTok, 1,290. It goes on and on. You can see the data. It is in black and white. And I encourage you guys to share this because while TikTok is going to try to sell an emotional appeal that they are out here defending Americans' rights, we know that they are turning content creators into foot soldiers. That is what this is about. This is a Chinese communist controlled company complaining that they won't have unfettered access to Americans' private data, geolocations, metadata, and contacts. Remember, this is a CCP controlled company claiming to stand up for constitutional rights while simultaneously engaging in slavery and horrific human rights abuses. We cannot forget that. And for anyone who is confused about the long term goal, about foreign adversaries utilizing apps, in America, it is so in this case specifically, China is looking to build a language model for their AI platforms to be able to use it to dictate U.S. policy. Everything that we have seen up to this point has been a beta test. That is not a conspiracy theory. The data, it speaks for itself. I never in my lifetime would have ever thought that I would be seeing Americans reading Obama, I'm sorry, uh, Osama bin Laden's letter to America and making excuses and apologizing and doing the bidding 
of our adversaries. If you think that's a coincidence, you're not paying attention. So again, make no, no mistake, this evidence, it is clear, it is damning. The CCP has golden shares in ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok. And while this is not singularly about one company, and it is not a ban, they love to be front and center on this issue. So they've opened that door. The harder that they try to salvage their ability to infiltrate our phones and our communities and the lives of 150 million Americans plus, the more clear it will become. For them, this is not about being profitable. We know that that's Meta's goal. It's not about the money. It is about access and it is about control. The CCP and the companies they control are pissed off that they will no longer have unfettered access. And today is when it stops. So thank you for being here and thank you to my colleagues for all your hard work on this.